well it looks like adventurers we woke up at this beautiful amazing waterfall today Yep guys, this morning we woke up in a beautiful place right next to a waterfall. Now we found this site on iOverlander and I kind of read through the reviews. Everything looked really great. One of the things that they said in the reviews numerous times was that it doesn't really get very busy here at night. It's super busy during the day. So we pulled in last night and there was one van here. And while we were setting up all of our stuff, another few vans pulled in and started also getting comfortable for the night. Now it's pretty late in the evening, but absolutely a gorgeous place waking up to in the morning. The trees here have mosses. They're just kind of overhanging just enough to make it this like super comfortable Pacific Northwest feel. And uh, right over on the opposite side of where my van is, there's the waterfall. In fact, we're about to go explore this one and check it out a little bit closer. Okay, so before we go explore the waterfall, I have a story for you guys. Campsites are always really unique, and so you always wanna explore the entirety of the property around them. And there's a reason for that. You find unique things that might just be of interest to you and give you a few little brain wrinkles. So we're starting off our morning with some brain wrinkles and some good ones at that. In fact, check out this wheel right here. Do you see that wheel? Do you see it? Do you see it? Notice that it says 1916 on it. Well, believe it or not, the very park is actually a very unique park and a very interesting one that has a story all its own well beyond the waterfall itself. Here at Wakina Falls, the Rotary Club in 1916 actually placed a fountain, a fountain in the very place that that rotary wheel actually is now. And it was a place to welcome motorists to a cool, refreshing, nice place. In fact, this park right here, and this was a roadside stop way back even in 1916. But something tragic happened along the way and they had a mudslide. And whenever that mudslide came through here, it basically decimated the entire area. And whenever it did, it left the roadside stop in pretty bad shape. Now here you can find a couple of photos of what that historic fountain looked like. All the people here. This was between 1916 and 1930. It was enjoyed as one of the first landmarks of its kind. And in the 30s, whenever the flow came over, it decimated the site and this could no longer exist. So what happened to the rotary wheel? Well, they actually took it to a local fish hatchery and it sat there for a while. And you're probably thinking, but why? Well, this area wasn't anything like it is now at that time. After that slide came down, again, it was pretty much messed up and it took a long time for them to fix it. And in the meantime, this really nice wheel over here needed a home. So the fish hatchery seemed to be a good place. But the fish hatchery didn't just look like regular run-of-the-mill fish hatchery. It, it looked like this. This was a pretty grandiose fish hatchery and because the basin had been destroyed, they wanted to go ahead and bring it here and they actually put it into storage. Unfortunately, while it was at the hatchery, they also kind of forgot about it. And so it ended up sitting in storage for about 55 years. Now they rediscovered this thing well into the 80s and they discovered that it hadn't been in use for quite some time because it just been sitting there collecting dust. And so they decided they wanted to bring it out and celebrate it once again. So they did, but this time in a very different location. They took it to Horsetail Falls and well, it ended up getting stolen. So you're probably asking, well, Bunny, if it got stolen, then why is it here again? Well, someone actually discovered the stolen truck and also the stolen wheel, and it was returned to its rightful place here at the falls. 
But it wasn't immediately that it returned. They put it back in storage for just a little while until they could figure out what to do with it. And they had a lot of different thoughts. But the only rightful thought that came to mind that made sense was to bring that wheel back to where it all began. To this place that once welcomed motorists and does again once today. And I'm pretty happy that they did because this park is a very nice rotary park. You can come here and have picnic tables and uh, when they're not having a burn ban, you can also use the grills. But it's a very nice shaded place. You can hear the water just on the other side and uh, there's a restroom here and all sorts of other amenities that a motorist tired from the road, <sighs> like myself last night, could enjoy. So the moral of the story is whenever you're searching along and scrolling through all your iOverlander posts to make sure that you read the reviews and uh, then also whenever you get to the area look around a little bit. You never know what kind of brain wrinkles you're gonna get. But now let's go to what you've been waiting for this whole time. Let's go check out the falls. I'm so excited. I can see it kind of trickling over and um, it's gonna be epic. Now I will say this, something I have noticed through this part of Oregon is because of the heat wave that's been passing through, some of the ferns, which typically are super lush, super green, currently they're pretty scorched looking and it's kind of sad. Just goes to show that the change in climate and temperature around us really does change the look of some of these places. So that's something I've been observing, even in some of these leaves and things. It's kind of sad to see because when I've been here previous, everything's just been electric and green and so, so lush. But right now, it's suffering, just like we have been in the heat. Just before we take on the Falls Trail, which is very short, we see this small map right here. It tells us where we are and where we need to go, which is right here. There's a viewpoint. Also, however, it tells us that one of the most popular stops in all of Oregon is just about a quarter of a mile away. There's a lot of different things here that are pretty fascinating that I think you're going to want to see. For example, right down here, they have pikas. Now, pikas are normally in alpine conditions, and so it's kind of interesting to see some facts about the pika that's here in this part of Oregon. But not only that, there's a couple of other critters here that we're going to possibly be able to spot while we're at the falls. So, kind of taking this in makes us aware of what we can see. So we'll be a little bit more aware overall and keep our head on a swivel but there's more. Now, as always, I don't want to mess up a name because this is from an Indian word that means most beautiful. So I think it's Wakina. It may be Wakina though. So this is a 242 foot waterfall and it was once known as Gordon Falls in honor of a pioneer landowner, F.E. Gordon. In 1915, however, that's whenever it was changed to the word that it currently is that means most beautiful. Now normally, I would try to find somebody who's from the area and just ask, or I would ask Google. Unfortunately, however, with AT&T, my service here is not good, so I can't even ask Google. And um, do you see any locals? I do not. So I wanted to say that before we get any closer to the falls, just in case the name is slightly different because I don't want to disrespect the people that it was named after. I just, as a Texan, do not know. But with that said, there's a couple of other pieces of information here that you're going to want to check out. I'm going to leave those for you, and we're going to head up these stairs and to the falls. We are just about to get our first view of the water, but we have one more brain wrinkle. This is Simon Benson. He lived from 1851 to 1942. He was a philanthropist and lumberman and actually donated a tract of land that ended up containing Multnomah and then also this falls right here in addition to Benson State Park. In other words, without this guy donating the land so that we could all come out here, this would be a privately owned waterfall. And there are a lot of falls that actually do fall on private lands. And so you can't go and see them. And it's always unfortunate whenever you see this beautiful picture. And then the little tagline says, cannot enter, private land only. And, um, you know, I always get a little sad when that happens. But at the same time, we want to respect the land. So I get it. But this guy donated the land so we can all enjoy this. 
And so, with that said, I, I don't know if you can see, there's a little wall right here, but right over here, that's the first viewpoint. Let's go check it out. Now to see the upper observation area, we have a 0.2 mile trail. It's a pretty big incline, <sighs> but we're gonna do it. We can do it, we can do it, we can do it. And um, then we'll get a beautiful view, so it'll be completely worth it. Now this trail does go right alongside the roadway here, and it's beautiful. You can see the river kind of over here, and I'll show you that when we get back to the van, but this is a good way to start the day. Get our blood pumping. Let's go, let's go. Now this trail is pretty fascinating because as you're looking around the vegetation and also the rocks, you'll notice tons of different things going on, like this. This is a massive volcanic chunk right here. And on this hill, this is actually one of the slide areas that has occurred in addition to some burned wood. Now I learned a couple years ago at Mount St. Helens that you are more likely to have lightning strikes in areas that have this kind of rock because of the high content of minerals. And so I wonder if the fires that we're seeing here were caused by a lightning strike or by something else. It always just makes me kind of scratch my head and want to kind of go and do a little research after. So if you guys know, let me know in the comments. Oh my goodness, I just got my first glimpse and it's gorgeous up here. <sighs> Again, a little bit of a walk uphill, but definitely worth it once you get here. Oh my goodness, totally worth it, totally worth it. Uh, let, me, let me show you more, oh my goodness. Permagrin all day. Now that was absolutely epic, but it was super loud because the water is hitting very hard up there. It was a nice cool breeze that was a little damp and it actually felt really good. It felt like the Pacific Northwest that I've visited many times before with that slight chill and moisture in the air. And it really invigorated me to get going on this day for a great adventure. 
and um, I'm really happy that we decided to stay here and also to come up to the falls this morning. But now, down we go. Okay guys, we made it back down to the bottom, but I wanted to check out one more thing before we hit the road to our next adventure. Right across the road, you can actually see where the river comes through after coming off of the falls, or the stream, or, or whatever you want to call it. It's the flow off from the waterfall, and it makes its way through the park. Now this is the same park that we were talking about at the beginning of the video, so it's a nice compliment. So when you stay here at night, you hear water in all directions. On this side of the road, where the falls is, and then on the other side, where the water pushes through. It is so comforting to hear water flowing at night and it's one of my favorite things. In fact, when I don't have a beautiful waterfall to sleep at, I actually listen to rain in my van. It's just my little thing that gives me a little comfort and a, a good sleepy time. But let's go check out the uh, water flow area over here and get one last view of this beautiful place. Okay, so we made it to the bottom, and the first thing I see is this sign right here, sensitive salmon area. Now, I don't see any fish, and currently the water level is not the highest that it probably gets, but this is a spectacular way to relax and also to capture this video and close it out, I think. So let me show you a few of the views, and uh, I'm gonna close it here. Remember, guys, we're not here for a long time, but we are here for a good time, and um, you can soak in this good time right now.